Hey y'all, today we're gonna show you how to make cheesy garlic bread in our Ninja Foodie, all while having a whole lot of fun. Oh yeah. back to another edition of cooking Chris's dishes today with just the good old boy where we're cooking up another dish from recipes that crock.com my beautiful wife's food blog and today we're gonna be doing something for a foodie Friday got my pretty little foodie over here and we wanted to test out some garlic bread using the air crisp feature that comes with our ninja foodie and you know Chris eats low carb the whole family just eats low carb around here except for maybe this guy. So I happily volunteered to be the one, the guinea pig, who would come in front of you and eat bread smothered in butter and garlic and cheese, and, and I'm okay with it. I hope you're okay with it, because I'm telling you, it's really, really good. I just tested out a batch of it, worked out some kinks, and I am super happy about this. And what you're gonna need, well, you're gonna need some bread. I went down to one of the local stores down here in Texas, and they have great big loaves of artisan French bread. This is a little over half the loaf, so this is a big batch of bread right here. I'm not gonna need that much, but it's perfect because it's, it's big and wide and you can cut it really thick. Those small French bread baguettes, I guess you call them, you could use those, but, well, I like more bread, so I'm gonna get one of the bigger pieces. But it's fresh, it was just baked today, and it's really, really, really good bread. So. What I'm going to do is I want to cut this bread into about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter in width. I want big pieces of bread here. And the reason is I want it to be crispy on one side, crispy and cheesy on the other, but I want it to be doughy, chewy in the middle. To me, that is the perfect kind of garlic bread. So I'm just going to grab three pieces here because that is what I have figured of this size of bread fits in our Ninja Foodie. Now, one thing we did not pack with us on this trip was a bread knife, so I'm trying to do this with a regular sharp knife, so hopefully I don't cut myself. I know it makes for good TV and all that, but it doesn't make for good doctor bills, so. All right, so I'm gonna set this bread back in the bag. I'm sure it's gonna be eaten later, because it is really, really good bread. And that and I'm planning on making some spaghetti, maybe tonight, and I know that we'll take care of that. So I got three pieces of bread here. I'll show you right here in the GoPro. So there's the size of my thumb, about the width of my thumb, which is about just a little over an inch. Let's see, it's really, really spongy in the middle, and it's got a really good crust on the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay out my bread, and then I'm gonna take some butter, and I want to be generous with my butter because one, it's gonna help with flavor. Two, this is a salted butter and I'm not using any salt whatsoever. I'm gonna use some garlic powder and we're doing this based on Mama, which is Chris's mom. When she would make garlic bread when they were younger, it was simply a slice of bread with some garlic powder on it over some buttered bread and then she would put the cheese on top. Back home, we call that redneck garlic bread. I'm gonna bump it up a few notches here with this artisan French bread that we're using, but I wanna make sure it gets really, really butter. So I am really, you can see here, I am gonna go crazy with the butter. And I'm only gonna butter the top side because that butter is actually gonna soak down into the bread as it goes through the process of that air crisp feature. But I'd say I'm putting a good, maybe two teaspoons almost a tablespoon of butter on one side of that bread. That is a lot of butter, but again, this butter is really, really thick. So I'm just gonna slather that butter on there as good as I can. It's also gonna give something for the uh, garlic powder to stick to as we put that on here in just a minute. Let me grab this last piece of bread and do the same thing. I'll be a little more generous with this one. This will be my piece. But one thing we were working with here was mozzarella cheese, which is what you'd normally put on cheesy bread. And I have not tried this yet, but I've made me a piece. And that is, y'all remember that pimento cheese that you were asking Chris, by the way, thank you very much for doing so. When you asked Chris to make that, she's like, you know what you could do? Because this video is gonna come out right after we do the pimento cheese video. 
you could try pimento cheese on top and see how that works. I haven't had it yet, but I can tell you it came out really, really pretty. So there, I've got my butter on top, and now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take just some regular garlic powder. There's Miss Ad, she's coming in from school. I'm just going to take some regular gar garlic powder, not garlic salt, but garlic powder, and that's going to go right over the top. I'm not going to go crazy with the garlic powder because a little garlic goes a long way, but <clears throat> That's completely up to your taste. I'm going to put just enough on top to know I've got some of that butter. But again, garlic powder is really, really strong. And then on top of that, I'm going to take some. You're going to say, how much is some, Mike? I'm going to say, I don't know. Because I don't know how big of bread you've got. But what I want is just enough to cover the top of each piece. So in my case, it's about a handful. But just enough that it covers, and it also depends on how much cheese you want. I love cheese, so I put a generous amount. That's what I'm going to call it. As far as the measurement goes, we're just going to call it a generous amount of cheese on top. Just like that. And I'm going to save this last piece, and I'm going to try it with the pimento cheese. But what I've seen from this size of bread, and again, we've got that great big loaf. Three pieces fits down in the foodie just right to get enough circulation on both sides and to really crisp up that top. If you notice my rack is down. When I first started this I had the rack up because I thought you really want the the cheese to be close to that broiler. Well the problem is with the thickness of that bread it gets a little too close and some of that cheese touched my my broiler on top and when it touches that grate well it burns and that's not that great. So want to make sure it's down low. Now I'm going to take some of this pimento cheese. If you hear some noise rattling around, that's Aki. He's hungry too, so he's getting him some food. We won't be giving him any of the garlic bread. And I'm just going to take, since that pimento cheese is cold, I kind of got to just dot it on top of my bread. And then it will melt down all together. So it might look a little dotty in the video, but I know from the last experiment that I did that it spreads out just fine it kind of bubbles up browns up just a little bit and turns out just right I'm gonna get just a little bit more I'd say altogether I probably used maybe a tablespoon maybe not quite a tablespoon of, of pimento cheese on there but since that pimento cheese is cold it's not really that spreadable see if I can make this bread fit like I did before. Here we go, just like that. So you can see with the pimento cheese, it kind of looks like it's in clumps. Trust me, it's going to melt down with that heat. So now what I want to do, I'm going to remove my camera here so I don't break it. Close my lid and I'm going to set this on air crisp. And I want to go at 360 degrees and I am going to go for eight minutes. That's what I did with this last batch. And it's real simple. Let me set up my camera again because you don't need to wait when I've got it ready for you right now. Because I've got a batch that I just made. So while that's cooking for eight minutes, this is what we've got. I'm going to come up here and see you. I know my hands are all messy, but it's okay. Here is your regular garlic bread. That was done eight minutes at 360 on the bottom side of the rack there. And you can see, I don't know if you can kind of see on the bottom there where that butter soaked through. So you get a little crispy on that side. Of course, it's browned up. And then this is the pimento cheese. But since this is for testing purposes, I know I can tear up this bread and it'll be all right. I want you to hear this bread, listen to it. I'm gonna put it right there next to the mic. You hear that? How it's crispy. And now, Got to give it a taste test. Mmm. It's cooled off just enough to eat it. That butter soaked all the way through. And of course, you got the oils from the cheese itself as well. It's going to soak down into that bread. So I don't worry about butter in the bottom. You totally can if you want to. Just an extra step. It's really chewy in the middle still. And then that, that, that cheese is just toasted on the top. What I want to do since I've got your attention. 
is I want to try this pimento cheese out and see how it does. You saw this was dotted on there just the same as the other was. You see how it spread out and it browned up and bubbled up on top? Hear that again? Oh, yeah. That bread smells so good. And you can see the oil from the cheese as well as the butter is soaked way down into that bread. So, again, you got your crispy cheese on top. It's crispy on the bottom. It's crispy around the edges and it's really, really soft in the middle. Holy moly. Mmm. Y'all. I don't think I'm going to make regular garlic bread again. That is so good. Where mozzarella cheese is going to give you a chew. You know, because mozzarella cheese, as it melts together, gets really chewy like on pizza or anything else. That pimento cheese just melts in your mouth. And you put that with that butter, on with that, 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 garlic, that garlic powder. There's so many flavors in there. And it's not, you got enough chew coming from your bread. But that that cheese just melts in your mouth and it's really really buttery mmm I'm so glad that you asked Chris to make that pimento cheese again otherwise we wouldn't have been able to do this and test that out because we ran out of pimento cheese already mmm that is good that is eight minutes in the foodie again with bread this size you can get about three pieces in there if you do a smaller baguette you could probably get six to seven pieces you'll just have to check it out but again, I would cut it at about an inch, maybe a little bit more than an inch thick, and you'll get all those textures. You'll get the softness from the inside of the bread. You'll get the crispiness on the outside, so you get a little bit of crunch with it too. And it is super, super good. It is really good. I really like that. And I'm really hoping that you like what we're doing here. If you do, give us a thumbs up down below. Also, if you've not become a member of the Crock Posse, make sure you click the subscribe button down below and become a welcome member of our crock posse if you want to know as soon as we put up a new video make sure you click the little bell next to it called the ding -a -ling. and y'all most importantly whatever you do laugh often eat good food and speak life now it's time to get that spaghetti on the pot bye y'all if you want to see the latest click on the left right here if you feel like subscribing click on the right my dear and if you think we're funny enough to send us money like the patreon link below